Thank you. Uh, the redevelopment agency meeting of March 7, 2007 is called to order. This meeting has been properly noticed and posted in compliance with the open meeting law. Item number three is approval of the final minutes by reference of the regular redevelopment agency meeting of February 7, 2007. I have a motion to approve the minutes, please. No additions to the lease and John. I make a motion for approval of the minutes, please. Thank you. Let's vote on that. Post. Motion carries. Thank you. Item number four is discussion and possible action regarding easements and rights of way to the Las Vegas Valley Water District for a water line to supply fire sprinkler water is required for the rehabilitation of the historic Fifth Street School located at 400 Las Vegas Boulevard South in Ward 3. Mr. Adams. Uh, Scott Adams, Director of the Office of Business Development. This uh, action follows up on action you took at your previous meeting where we approved a neutral local agreement with the Water District to uh, provide for uh, a, a fire sprinkler suppression system in the uh, Fifth Street School for our renovation. This simply provides an easement and rights of way to the uh, Water District to uh, actually make those improvements on our property and staff recommends approval. All right, thank you. Are there any questions of Mr. Adams? Did you wish to be heard? John McGowan, as previously, I recommend approval of this uh, excellent item. Thank you. Would anyone else like to be heard? All right. Um, thank you. May I have a motion, please? Move for approval, please. Thank you. Let's vote, please. Post. Motion carries. Thank you. Item number five is discussion and possible action regarding extending the Neonopolis Parking Validation Program for 90 days to Wirola Hayward, LLC, located at 450 Fremont Street in Ward 5. Stratus? Okay, just a little background on this item. Uh, back in uh, September, you approved an initial 90-day uh, extension of the validation program that's provided to users of Neonopolis uh, through December of, of last year. Then again, in December, you extended that validation program for an additional 90 days. That 90 days expires tomorrow, uh, uh, March 8th. So for that reason, we have asked that the owner of Neonopolis or the representative appear before you to present their progress in the redevelopment of the Neonopolis project. And to that end, um, representatives of uh, Neonopolis ownership are here today to uh, present to you where they're at on their project and then let you make a determination of whether you should extend uh, the validation program for any additional period. Okay, are the uh, three gentlemen together? Yes. All right, could you please identify yourselves for the record? I'm Rui Joshi of Las Vegas, Nevada. Michael Matkins, Los Angeles, California. Uh, Ari Levin, Jalan Productions. All right. Mr. Joshi? Mayor and the council members, uh, thanks for seeing us today regarding the parking validation extension. What I wanted to explain to you, first of all, is that the direction that we have taken in the last 90 days since I was here last time and that is that we worked on various major anchors that can be put into Neonapolis, in which I'm proud to announce today that we have made a decision to discuss, with your approval of course, is a, a development of a three major anchors instead of one large one. Uh, one of them will be a theater, a live performance theater. Uh, number two is a, a convenient supermarket that will be facing on the Ogden Avenue near Las Vegas and a drugstore on the Ogden at 4th. Uh, the theater will be facing on 4th at Fremont, and that will be a 30,000 square feet live performance theater, which is managed, operated, and productions are uh, handled by Mr. Ari Levine that you see here. And he'll be talking to you as well if you have any questions of him. But he has a very good track record on the strip. He has worked at Tropicana for some years. He has contributed to two or three major shows that would be a part of the major anchor. It's been very difficult to bring in a typical department store or a retail major anchor on Neonapolis. So we thought in order to continue the momentum that you have created at the city on the east of the uh, Las Vegas Boulevard on Fremont, that a entertainment, dining, and uh, lounges and bars and the clubs are the place that we would concentrate on. The major anchor is needed, uh, such as the, um, um, the live performance theater, in which what I've done is I've talked to the Fremont Street Experience and some of the hotel owners in the uh, downtown area. And what I've been able to gather is that uh, those that don't have a theater would like to promote theater at Neonopolis. They think that uh, five to seven hundred seats 
theater could be easily supported by the hotel owners. Uh, some of the hotel owners already promised me that they would buy three to five hundred seats per week. Uh, that means a lot to us because there are seven hotels that don't have theaters and we could put that in to the equation that financially it could be worked out very well. In that, as an owner developer, uh, the theater could be built very inexpensively because the land is there already, the building is there, so we just there's white space available. So by uh, just uh, making cosmetic changes, a theater of 30,000 square feet can be built. So with that in mind, and uh, I'm having discussions also with a supermarket for a convenience store. There's a lot of uh, uh, the condominium apartments and the housing is being built in the area, so it may take maybe a year or so because right now the demographics, demographics of downtowns are such that they had agreed to go forward as long as I can give them the frontage on Fremont. But to bring them into the back part of the Neonapolis, which is facing Ogden and uh, Fourth, as well as Ogden and Las Vegas Boulevard, they need more time to make a final decision on that. Which I will be working with the city staff as well with the OB, <coughs> with OBD and RDA. So that's first thing. Once we get the major anchor, which is going to be taking us three months to get all our plans finalized and approved by the city as well as by the tenant. In this case, the tenant is Ari Levine's production, Duran Production Studios. And thereafter, we'll get the bars, the lounges, the restaurants, which are also committed on the property, subject to creating more traffic. This theater will create approximately seven to 800 people to come into the project on a daily basis. It's a six day a week theater three, throughout the year. It's not like uh, certain theaters who only have 60 or 70 shows a year. So continuous traffic generation in downtown. We also have, of course, the theater upstairs, the uh, movie theaters are doing uh, okay, uh, and so is uh, Jillian's kept open up to now. So we request, we request that you extend us this uh, uh, time to finalize our deals with the tenants. In the meantime, if you have any questions, I have the attorney, Mr. Mike Matkins, here from uh, Los Angeles regarding any questions on the project, as well as Ari Levine, who will be the produ producer, operator, and manager of the theater. All right, Mr. Matkins, are you, would you like to address us? Well, let's have some questions. Okay, Mr. Levine, would you like to address us? Unless you have any questions. Well, I got a, a, a million questions. I got some concerns. Because with all due respect, Mr. Joshi, it's a bunch of gobbledygook. Um, and and I'm, I'm being nice about it. Uh, we start off uh, the presentation that uh, we made a decision to discuss three major projects. Who cares? I mean, uh, we have a an albatross strangling us. Uh, pardon my mixed metaphors here, but we're being strangled by Neonopolis. It's uh, the best corner in the valley, uh, the, the intersection of Las Vegas Boulevard and Fremont Street. It's virtually empty. Um, we uh, we have issues of, uh, as far as the future plans for it. Uh, I'm not satisfied with uh, your explanation. I'm really not. Uh, at the same time, however, I I don't want to punish innocent parties. And uh, the only bit of life uh, other than uh, the, the the drips and drabs of some of the other places that are open is the movie theater. And to deny them validation would dry that up uh, virtually overnight because people aren't going to pay parking to go to that movie theater when they have uh, reasons to go into the suburbs and park on surface parking. And um, I don't want to see the movie theater closed, but I will tell you this, it's going to be my recommendation, and we'll hear from everybody, it's going to be my recommendation that we give you 30 days extension on the validation so we're not punishing the innocent parties. Number two, I want you to meet with the city attorney who uh, indicates to me after the review of the documentation and the relationship between a Neonopolis in the city that there are some serious financial issues that have to be resolved and um, I, I want those discussions to take place within the 30 days and have uh, Mr. Jarvik report back to me and uh, in briefings to the other council members uh, as to the um, response concerning these financial issues and uh, then we'll decide what we're going to do 30 days from now. There's nothing I would rather do than hear a presentation saying that there was going to be success, but I, I don't hear that. Mr. Mackenzie, you want to respond? I wish it was success. <laughs> uh, I mean, Neonopolis 
uh, well, you, you, you know the prior history of uh, Prudential Life Insurance Company, um, and they couldn't make it work. I, I think Mr. Joshi has tried a number of a, a number of ideas to try to make Neonopolis work. I, I'm not sure this one works, uh, but but the ownership has uh, decided to commit uh, to spend a lot of its money to try to create its own anchor for the that will draw other tenants um, and to spend its own money because it can't get an anchor there. Uh, and, I, and I, you know, it's, you say it's an albatross for the city. It's, a, it's an albatross for the ownership, too. No, and, and I, don't, I don't question that. I mean, you say you spent a lot of money buying uh, what could be a, 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 what do they call it, a white elephant? Yeah. Yeah. And, um, uh, I guess so something, something has to be done. I don't know whether Mr. Joshi will have the wherewithal to do it, but um, uh, we have to. The, the city is going to have to take some action uh, if we can to get this resolved. Right now, uh, I've been advised by the city attorney's office that basically there's very little we can do because uh, the city controls the garage and basically the the floor uh, of uh, Neonopolis uh, because we own the ceiling to the garage. Uh, and that's about it. Uh, but uh, we're going to look very carefully into the financial situations here and see whether or not there's been a default, because we have to get this thing moving one way or the other. Uh, and, I'm, and I'm not. Uh, I'm where not you're, where you're, I mean, I think the ownership's your partner on that. Where, and where, I'm not, where I'm not uh, waving my finger. This is just a, a fact of life. Uh, we have to have that resolved if we're going to have the downtown that this council wants to have. Uh, I'll say it again. I, I think uh, the ownership is your partner. It, 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 to, to resolve it will help, help both the city and the ownership. Right now, we can't figure out what that solution is. I, I appreciate that. And, but as I say, Mr. Joshi, I want you to contact Mr. Jervik I at, at your earliest convenience so I we will. can sit down with you and Thank go you. over some of our concerns. Thank you. Very much. Yes, sir. I'm very brief. Uh, I'm John McGowan, Las Vegas resident. In a lap of the Vegas Grand Prix event, the Minneapolis property is identified as quote, the Latin Quarter, the Latin Village, pardon me. What is the genesis and the detailed particulars of that Latin Village designation? Anybody? What does it mean? Uh, maybe uh, if the council is not advised on that, no, perhaps the property owner is. But that's what it's described as by Vegas Grand Prix. I see. Uh, that's the first I've heard of it. Okay. We need to uh, find out what it may be something good. Who knows? Mayor Jim, may I yes. question, please? Mr. Adams, we've got um, Streamline coming on soon. Uh, when do you expect um, that, to, that project to be done, and how many units? And can we guesstimate what percentage of those units will be um, actually lived in and utilized versus just held for rentals? And then I'm going to ask you the same question for Jewel. Because I'm I'm going in a in a direction. Mm -hmm. um, I don't have the exact numbers, but I can give you some real good guesstimates. I would expect there's a, probably another year left on our construction based on where they're at today. Um, they are, um, and I, actually, it's in my RDA PowerPoint update as to where their sales are right now. Um, they are well into their sales, and if they are following the pattern of all the downtown condominium projects. We're seeing roughly 50% of the units being bought by people who actually live in the units who want to live downtown, and the other 50% purchased by investors who are picking them up as second, third residence, or investment units. How many total units at Streamline? About 250, and that's where I'm trying to find the latest on their sales. Um, yeah, they've got a, a 275 units, and they've got 165 sold right okay, so now. So that's 275 at Streamline. And what about Jewel? Jewel is roughly 340 units. They're probably at a similar progression in terms of sales so my and the same complexion. Thank you, thank you. My point is that in the next year or so, we're going to have 500 plus rooftops right downtown, right in the area that Mr. Joshi, people are going to want to be able to go places to enjoy the downtown area. So I'm echoing what the mayor is talking about. We'd like you to succeed, but we're growing a little impatient because we're going to have, as time grows on, and it's it's around the corner, a greater need oh, to provide the amenities that people are going to come to expect in 
downtown Las Vegas. I agree with you, and as a matter of fact, uh, Councilman, please note that we are losing $3.2 million a year. It's been nine months we've been losing money also because we are waiting for the growth to occur. And I think that's the point that I think we are trying to make is that unless you have major anchors, just putting a small boutique shop is not going to be the answer. Prudential tried it, they didn't work. We tried major anchors all throughout the country to bring them in, and they are not coming to downtown at this time unless there is a major a revival that occurs and it's proven the point that there is uh, demographics change, I think they'll definitely come. In the meantime, we have to wait and kind of work with it. We didn't expect to wait for nine months. It's nine months this week that we purchased the property. I worked on it for two and a half years, so I think I do know what Neonapolis requires and what has to be done. Problem has been that it's just a matter of timing. We had a lot of encouraging people came to us with various proposals to come into Neonapolis and the reason was they all want cheap rents and they want the frontage. <coughs> and we are saying that that's not available. We can lease up three stores at a very good rent and then everything will be always vacant for a long time. The movie theater is on a break-even point and Jillian's is not making money. So when you combine the two, uh, if we decide to do it any other way, we are also very open-minded. The reason we kept all these things open is because you, two of the council people here felt we got to keep those things open and we are making losses. And we are doing that for the purpose of our relationship with the city. And that's the, the reason Mike is telling you that we are partners in this deal. We don't want any harm to occur to the city. We know that you're expanding eastward, and that requires this particular epicenter to be leased up quickly. But it's, I hope it was as easy as everybody thinks it is. If, like uh, Michael said, if Prudential, with all their financial resources, couldn't do it, and they had every developer in the country could have come here, and as you know, they did approach uh, Prudential and the city to do this deal, and they weren't able to buy it, and they weren't able to correct it. So I think it's going to be a patient road. It's got to be worked together as a team, and I think that's the way we're going to have to work together on this deal. Never I thank that. you very much for your time. And I'm sorry, I'd be remiss if I didn't mention Sam Cherry's properties, the one oh, that's uh, Newport and Soho. Newport and Soho. There's a lot of rooftops coming downtown. And, and the, the tin homes are rather up and about. So uh, there's like basic real estate development. It's, it's nice the city can say rooftops are coming. It's nice the owner can say I want to have a successful project. It's nice some lender says I want a loan on the project. The, all of real estate is driven by tenants. And until a tenant says, I believe that, I want to be there, it won't get done, no matter what everybody else says. So it's, it's, it's tenant-driven. Uh, I, I do think, and I don't, like I said, I don't know if this is the right answer, uh, but, but the ownership has decided to go spend a lot of its own money to put this theater in there to try to generate people, to try to, try to generate tenants. But we need tenants. What we need. Mr. Well, so, Mayor, well, excuse me. Yes, Councilman. When you're done, go ahead. I'll no, but go ahead. Please. I was just going to say that I haven't been impressed with the presentation either today. My concern is that uh, uh, you're business people. You're supposedly knowing what you're doing. You came into this. And when I go to the Neonopolis, I see far less vibrancy there than I saw before you came. And uh, I, I, too, agree with the mayor that the one bright spot out there has been um, uh, the movie theater. We still take our families there from people who live near this area. And I, I don't want to punish them because I have concerns about what you're doing. But the information I'm getting as to your business practices and what's happened in the past uh, places a big concern on me when I hear you come here today, say the major tenant is going to be live theater, when we have some live theater in some of the casinos and they're not packed. And you, so how many people you're expecting, I don't see that, and I have a great concern, as you mentioned, sir. Uh, I just feel that something more has to be done. And uh, I, use, I went there a few times when you had, you know, the musicians down in the courtyard, the ice cream shop, and all of that. And instead of building on that, it seems to me everything was kicked out. And I would have built on what was positive and what was attracting some people to bring more people rather than get rid of them. I'm not the business person, however you are. I just wanted to state, and I've stated in briefings in this council, I have very big concerns. I'm glad Jillian is, is being given additional time to work out. Uh, and I have very big concerns for the theater, and I'm not impressed at all. When you come here, as the mayor said, he used the term gobbledygook, but I mean, when I tried to focus, uh, what you were saying was going to show progress. It's very hard. It, to, it was just like uh, a Pillsbury Doughboy. You could push and you couldn't find the right answer. 
And uh, so I just want to say today that I'm very, very concerned, and I'm, I know that I'm asking staff to watch this carefully, as is every other member, I think, of the council. Thank you. All right. My name is Hodges, and resident. Mayor, I was down there when you christened Neonopolis and, you know, putting out a signature on the beam and all that. That thing came out of the ground, a lemon. And the city do have an obligation too. Now the businessman, you gotta ring his neck. Listen, if you close it, listen. If you close the theater down, my wife might divorce me. You see, the theater when these new unison thing come in and the downtown build itself up, people like to go to the local movie. What especially when they don't have to drive the car. A lot of people gonna start living downtown. So save the movie and the basement that keeps the cars. And then the rest of that stuff. Well, I. Work out somebody. These are business people, and and the city got an obligation to it. That's a lemon from the get go. Now let me tell you something too, Oscar. When Jan Jones was the mayor, I was one of the people down here said, "Hey, build the Fremont Street Experience, fifty-five million dollars." Only Stupak wanted to go eighteen hundred feet with, with with the stratosphere, and then the FAA stepped in and said, "Hey, twelve hundred is the best you can do." What well, I'm trying to say, man, I'm down here for a lot. I know the name of the game. Okay? Now keep the theater, give these people some sort of chance. It ain't all they fault, and it ain't all yours. But it's yours to a great degree. But you inherit the situation, so when you became mayor, hello in 99, let's get our act together here, okay? The point is, uh, uh, Neonopolis is a joke. Now let's track on the truth, Miss, Miss uh, uh, Council Leader Amsa. You know, the truth really does hurt. That thing's a lemma. But my wife like going down there. You know, it's kind of. Convenient, get out the car, go up there, you know, walk a few feet to the theater. You know, she's having, the, you know, little truck, whatever. She's disabled to a great degree. The point is that the theater got a chance with the future. That theater do have a chance. And uh, y'all got to come up with some kind of business. To, I hate to say it, guy, but you had to pull with your money, rack back a bit for a few more months or so, whatever. But let something get moving in this town. But you can save it, Oscar. But it's got to be a team effort on all your part. Excuse me, but you still in business? <coughs> I think uh, what this uh, shows, Dr. Selby, is how vitally important to us getting the arena in the downtown is, because that could be the, the project that is the glue that will bind all of these other projects. We, we really have to uh, be concentrating on that. Yes, sir. Uh, good morning, Mr. Mayor, uh, Council. Uh, my name is John Kimi. I'm a criminologist hired by Mr. Dalton uh, and various other, other creditors of Mr. Joshi. Uh, we have given to a, a source in town information showing that uh, Mr. Joshi has represented to be the uh, front person for various groups and indeed was not. Uh, we have shown now to the city attorney that the city entered into an agreement with Joshi and Associates there was no Joshi and Associates. It's a multi-million dollar deal. No Joshi and Associates. Uh, the uh, city attorney was quoted recently in an article saying that there was no finding against Joshi. Indeed, a judge, when Joshi was trying to do a development with another city, uh, did find fraudulent inducement. So he indeed was convicted of that. Uh, you mentioned Jillian's. Uh, when you say he was convicted, was he charged criminally? Uh, he was not charged criminally. It was a civil, well, civil he's fraud. Not, he's not convicted, though. That's right. You're right. You're right. I mean, that, that, you it was be, a civil fine. You've got to be a little careful when you I'm use words right. like conviction. Uh, that's, uh, that, that borders on a little, uh, right. little uh, recklessness. But go ahead. Uh, you mentioned Jillian's, madam. Uh, Jillian's is now owned by Mr. Joshi's girlfriend. Um, and if I'm trying to indicate that there's an auspicious nature to this, because I am. It's going to be front and center about it. Um, in examinations for my creditors, Mr. Joshi said, no involvement, no deals, working for free, all of that. We're finding, well, why is Jillian's the only one? I looked, and of course, now I find out that it's his girlfriend that owns it. So what we are trying to do is exact his participation because we know what he has done to other cities. Happy to pass names to the city attorney, uh, including mayors of other cities. And we are trying to exact his position so that we can act accordingly. So there is concern, and I think it's a righteous concern. Okay. Uh, That's it. We, we are concerned. Thank you. There's no question about that. And whatever information you have that you believe is pertinent to the issues, please share it with Mr. Turvick, because Mr. Joshi and Mr. Turvick are going to sit down and 
they're going to have uh, um, a serious discussion. Thank you, Mr. Mayor, and I will do that. Okay. Yes, sir. Good morning, Mayor, Council. Uh, my name is Ted Russell. I am a resident of Las Vegas. I echo entirely the comments of our Councilwoman Tarkanian with regard to the theater, specifically Shag with the twist has been promoting very heavily, working hard, a great show, but again, not packed every night. On the surface, I am concerned with what is presented as meager as it is. Uh, they're talking about a drugstore. We have a fabulously successful Walgreens right at that site. Uh, that doesn't make any sense to me. As far as a convenience store negotiated via a supermarket corporation, that doesn't make any sense to me. That's all I have. Thank you so much. Okay. All right. Thank you very much. Uh, could I have a motion, please? Mayor Goodman. Yes. Uh, yeah. I'm sorry. What mechanism do we have in place when someone comes before us and makes serious allegations? And that's all they are, <laughs> allegations. But what mechanism do we have in place to check into the veracity and the, the credibility of these allegations? I think we have a responsibility. And I'm not trying to cast any bad light on anybody, but I think we have an obligation to at least make inquiry. Well, uh, we have made inquiry uh, in this matter, Councilman. Uh, we've had uh, letters brought to our attention uh, recently within the past two days uh, from uh, uh, Asia, uh, from uh, business uh, ventures that allege uh, uh, connections with Mr. Joshi. Uh, those are being investigated by our city attorney. Okay, they are. Yes. They are. That's, thank you very much. Yeah. I guess, Sean, my, uh, my question would be, uh, if we have all these concerns, uh, are we looking for a 30-day extension on the parking, or are we hold us in abeyance for 30 days? Or I think I mean, the, I the, 30 the parking days. expires tomorrow. The validation expires tomorrow, so I would suggest that we give uh, 30 days uh, more of validation, and at the end of the 30 days, we'll be back here. Uh, uh, I, I would just ask uh, staff: Do do we feel like 30 days is enough, Brad, to uh, come up with anything concrete, or uh, even Mr. Yo uh, Yoshi's people. I don't know where they can well, have anything. I'll, I'll be frank with you, uh, Mayor Pro Tem. Uh, Thirty days better be enough time. Uh, That's fine. Uh, yeah, this yeah. is a matter of great uh, uh, interest to the council, yes. and uh, I, I think it's uh, an exigent situation at this point in time. So, uh, uh, Brad uh, Jervik, our city attorney, indicated he can sit down and uh, we'll paint the picture and we'll see how the uh, uh, the colors come out. Well, I, I would uh, certainly volunteer myself. Uh, I know. Uh, this is in Ward 5, but I've been very much involved in the uh, neon office uh, for a long time. So, uh, Mayor, I would volunteer to be uh, involved in any meetings that we have to be involved with uh, at this location. Uh, my motion would be to extend uh, the contract for 30 days. All right. That, let's vote on that, please. April 4th. Post, please. Thank you. Motion carries. Good luck to you. All right, item number six is discussion and possible action regarding a designated services agreement with Total Quality Resources Corporation to conduct construction project partnering and conflict resolution services for the rehabilitation of the historic Fifth Street School located at 400 Las Vegas Boulevard South. This is at Ward 3. Mr. Adams. Yes, uh, Scott Adams again. Um, as you know, I mentioned that we are moving forward with uh, seeking bids for the renovation of the Fifth Street School. and. Um, the, we anticipate having a contractor on board. This contract provides partnering services in the event they need to be available in terms of resolution, uh, resolving any disputes between city and the contractor. And this is a standard provision on uh, our construction contracts and staff recommends approval. All right. Thank you. Any questions of Mr. Adams? Or did you wish to be heard? Tom McGowan, Las Vegas resident. In uh, who are the corporate officers and what's the uh, corporate headquarters address of Total Quality Resources Corporation? The reason for the question is there seems to be uh, a room for local origination. The, the uh, address is 6108 Iron Kettle Street, Las Vegas, Nevada, 89130. And uh, the telephone number is 610-1919. That's the corporate headquarters That's or the field headquarters. Pardon me? Are they out of state or in state? They appear to be. Uh, well, from my that address, that's in state. Yeah. Do they have an out of state corporate headquarters 
basically the question. Not that we know of. Uh, not from anything that is in the back. But not on the record That's so right. far. Right. But that, that doesn't... Uh, I would remind the RDA that any contract that comes before you uh, has a disclosure of principles attached as right. part of the backup as part of that contract. Well, uh, we determined in that case that it is a local They're both company. Local. They're both locals. I know that for a fact. Okay, thanks. Right. Mr. and Mrs. Portero. Yes. Right. Both locals. Okay, may I have a motion, please? Can we staff recommendation for approval, please? All right, let's vote, please. Post. Motion carries. Thank you. All right, number seven is report and possible action regarding redevelopment agency projects currently under contract or in negotiation. Travis? Okay, this is uh, our quarterly, routine quarterly update on the progress of projects in the RDA. Um, starting with World Market Center, of course, uh, the State of the City address was held in phase two of World Market Center. That project is now complete. Uh, I think the amazing thing is while they were having their show, in January, they started the steel erection of uh, phase three, which is now well underway. It's difficult for us to keep our photos up to date here. This was a, a February 9th picture, and I know the steel is well beyond where it is right now. The framework is going up very quickly. And of course, these are all phases towards overall completion of World Market Center's eight building project that will comprise 12 million square feet, and they have to make completion somewhere around the year 2014. Uh, when complete will be uh, the largest furniture mart in the world. Uh, we continue to move forward with Newland Communities on various phases of Union Park. I'll go into each one of those uh, in, individually. Uh, clearly, we've been working, uh, moving forward with the Smith Center for the Performing Arts on their design team on designing their project, and I know they will be coming forward very soon with some conceptual plans that they will make available for what the uh, actual Performing Arts Center Performing Arts Center will look like. Uh, the Lou Rubo Brain Institute had its official groundbreaking, and they uh, actually had on your agenda earlier today uh, the approval uh, the council did uh, of um, the start of the bond issuance process to finance the Brain Institute, and they will be actually having a, an official groundbreaking to start their public improvements here shortly. World Jewelry, the World Jewelry Center continues to move forward uh, very well. They're having a great deal of success in getting commitments from around the world from jewelry companies to commit to this site. To remind you again, this is a million square foot building, 55, 54 stories tall, that will have 100,000 square feet of re uh, jewelry only retail at the base of the project. Newland uh, Communities uh, is has under uh, their agreement with us that they will purchase their first phase of their six blocks of reserve rights in uh, Union Park by the end of this year. We're actually going to be working with them on soil borings on blocks F and G, which are the two blocks at the center of their six blocks. We're also working with them uh, on the development of a boutique hotel on block F, which is the southernmost of those blocks in F, G, which are in the middle of the their six blocks. Uh, they secured interest from a boutique hotel developer. Uh, we're going to be soon negotiating an ENA with that developer and bringing that forward for your approval as well. Um, Las Vegas Premium Outlets has completed their first garage. They're now planning their second garage and started the expansion of the actual facility itself. So we're excited about the fact that this is the most successful premium outlet project in the United States on a sales per square foot basis and they chose to expand the project. The Southern Nevada Water Authority building, uh, the Mulaski Corporate Center is well underway now. Um, again, this is one of those pictures that's hard to keep up to date. If you've been by the building on the interstate side or, or on any side, the building looks virtually complete now. Uh, they are now pretty much on the inside doing interior finishes in the building and moving forward to a, uh, a completion uh, sometime uh, in the fall of this year. Very good, yes. May I ask a question, Sorry. Mr. Adams? Sure. In that project, Scott, um, I've heard that they're going to have a 24-hour fitness. Yes, that's in that. I, I'll mention. I um, we worked very hard with them to bring a fitness club downtown. In fact, we we had actually had several meetings with the principals of 24-hour 24-hour fitness to give them the the demographic information that would prove there's a market downtown for a fitness center. So they have committed to tenant 
and become one of the major tenants in the ground floor of this project. Now, one of the things that we did commit to them was the visual improvement program and a grant for signage as part of the incentive package to get them to commit to come downtown. So that will be coming back to you later once they get started into that process of their actual tenant improvements. And that would be an amenity that would be open to anybody, not just the tenants of the building, right? Uh, that, that, that's correct. This will be a, a, a club, just like a downtown athletic club around you see in many other cities. It will be available to anybody who works or who wants to work out downtown. You know, I've been working downtown now for about 26 years, and we've had a couple of quasi facilities. I think one of the local downtown properties, one of the casinos has a facility or something, but nothing that's been open to the public and visible and, and certainly not one of our, our newer type clubs. I think there's a great market for a fitness facility downtown. Absolutely. We believe so, too, and we were able to give them demographics that showed there was a great number of employees and businesses within the vicinity of that site. Oops, I, um, um, you know, as a summary, we have about a, a hundred projects in progress downtown in, within the RDA they, and um, that comprises about 15,000 plan units. Our current report shows that there's about, actually about a billion six under construction. There's another 10 billion that's planned. Um, continuing along, Soho Loss is now open. That was 120 units. That's complete. Newport Lofts has 168 units. There's 130 of those units sold. I think one of the things that you'll see as a theme here is downtown sales of condo units are doing very well. There's clearly a submarket establishing downtown of people who want to live downtown. Uh, Allure Towers, uh, their first tower uh, is 428 units. 375 are sold. Uh, as you know, when they um, uh, had their topping out, they, they talked about their second phase. They've contacted us. We're now starting initial discussions with them on their second phase. So hopefully that will be coming in very soon as well. Uh, Jewel is another one of those projects that's doing very well. 342 units, 230 sold. The interesting thing about Jewel, there's going to be several different types of housing in this project. Live work units, condo units, uh, flats, uh, townhomes, all around the central core of parking. And then on top of the parking will be their amenities. Streamline Tower, right, right really kitty corner from City Hall, has 275 units, 165 sold. Um, a couple of these, Streamline and, well, all of those actually, have very large contractors on site and they're moving along very quickly. Um, this project, Streamline, um, I can see out my window and I've been counting virtually one floor a week go up on this project. Evolution Tower is one that's been trying to move into sales. We've been working them on their strategy to go into sales. That would be 159 units. Of course, all of our projects we require as part of the Centennial Plan down uh, ground floor retail. And, uh, and a lot of these projects are starting to bring that ground floor retail online. And I'll remind you that on Loctane, uh, Potato Valley Cafe was one of the first of those to commit to that new ground floor retail. Urban Loss is moving along very well. This is their first project at 11th and Carson. They have 30 units, 25 are sold. As I said, they have waiting lists for all of their product. Um, we're excited that they're in our city and uh, they're a very successful developer. Moving to the entertainment district, uh, of course, we've had the concept for the improvements to uh, make this a, an entertainment district with widened sidewalks and new uh, neon signage. Uh, this is a couple shots of uh, the entertainment district on the left, upper left-hand side is just shortly after the groundbreaking when they just started to tear up the street and the lower right-hand corner is very recently where you can actually start to see the widened sidewalks going into place and you start to see the subservice going down for the actual street service that's going to go in place. They will be doing that project in phases working with the business owners so they can accommodate access to the individual businesses in the area. Uh, Beauty Bar is moving along very nicely. This is a shot of Beauty Bar at night on the right-hand side, a shot of a sign that they are proposing to come in, uh, ask probably in the very near future for visual improvement program assistance. Uh, the Griffin is now open. This is a shot of them at night, a shot in the right lower right-hand corner is of them open at night. Which, uh, we've been kind of charting um, the entertainment district and it's now making the local bar and club scene. Uh, we've been picking it up on blogs online and, and 
Actually, we heard this weekend that there were lines out the door of every one of the clubs in the entertainment district, just like you might see in New York City. So we're excited that the clubs have really gotten their name out there and people are starting to come downtown. Uh, this is another shot of Griffin with the tattoo parlor. Of course, these are both VI projects that you had previously approved. Uh, Take One continues to stay downtown and enjoy success in terms of attracting uh, businesses as a nightclub. And of course, Downtown Cocktail Room is another one of those. On the left is what it uh, used to look like. On the right, and it doesn't show up real good, is a night shot. It's now open. It has a fairly nondescript front with the neon lettering downtown. That's another club that's really starting to make its presence known in the local uh, nightclub scene. And I think they're having their formal opening tomorrow night. Yes, that. they're doing very well. Um, 601 Fremont is one that we're a little bit frustrated with. I'm going to be very candid. We're meeting with the, uh, the developer this afternoon. They have gone in, and as you see in the lower left-hand corner, and gutted the building, and they have tried to work several deals for nightclubs. Uh, they have, however, rested a lot of their focus on building condos to the rear as their first phase. What we're going to discuss with them at this afternoon is restructuring the deal to put the focus on the club and then really kind of back burner the condo project as that market is, is uh, somewhat flattened a little bit so that we can really kind of boost this project along, get the club in that ground floor space and get this moving along and contributing to the vitality of the entertainment district. Your Honor, if I may. Yes, sir. Mr. Adams, I thought that was a condition on this project anyway. Well, it, 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 it was, um, and we've structured a deal where they have uh, rent concessions on that ground floor, and they have worked several club deals. And none of those have reached fruition yet, so that's where I said I'm, I am a little frustrated, and we're going to be meeting with them this afternoon. We, we, we've talked to them last week about a concept of moving forward. We're going to meet face-to-face -face this afternoon, we hope to bring something back to you that will kind of break that deadlock and get this project off dead center. Uh, we just discussed Indianapolis, but I remind you that, that the Poker Dome is still there. Uh, that's one of the things that does contribute to our national recognition. It's on nationally televised uh, Fox Network. Uh, Hogs and Huffers continues to enjoy success. Um, the um, Frank Wright Plaza ENA that we have with the Lady Lux folks expires, that ENA, near the end of April, somewhere around April 18th. Uh, we, are, uh, they, we are having discussions with them now about whether to extend that ENA, and uh, we'll be coming back to you with some consideration of that request. Uh, Hennessy's is moving along. Um, they're doing very well on the ground floor, but uh, the, they just opened the Pint, their club at the second level that's inside that round uh, uh, piece in the corner of the garage that's going to be the Pint of Beer. And uh, as you can see in the right-hand picture, they're actually starting the wrap of that, which is starting to look like a Pint of Beer. So they are moving forward with both the wrap that will make it look like a pint of beer, and then they'll have their logo on the front, which is their sponsor that will be the actual beer company sponsoring that pint of beer. Mickey Finn's is, is still doing very well. And then moving along into redevelopment projects in the east and west, um, we continue to work with Alpha Omega on 1501 North Decatur. Um, what we've looked at doing is restructuring that as a DDA, and having an actual delayed disposition of the site pending getting information from them. Uh, uh, we are waiting for, for them to give us a site plan and a project description and a project breakdown of cost before we can structure that DD and bring that back into you for approval. Um, as you know, the 10-acre site in Enterprise Park that we've been focusing a grocery store plan for the ENA with DLC Urban Core expired at the end of January. We, uh, it actually formally expired the original agreement at the end of December. We extended it for 30 days specific to Food for Less. I did receive um, word from DLC Urban Core just this past week that Food for Less is elected to pass on this site. Uh, we, do, we, we are, though, having discussions with two other grocer developers, uh, one that has an anchor committed, and um, is willing to um, uh, move forward with his site. And uh, we're working uh, out discussions with, and then another grocery developer that's indicated they have 
a grocer available who they're unwilling to indicate who they are. The grocery, the grocery developer is a very substantial one locally, and we're looking at our options on both of those individual developers. Edmonton Center is a project where we continue to work with their investors and the developer on this project to reoccupy the Vaughn space. Um, Save a Lot continues to be interested in this space. We're working to try to get a co-tenant to come with them to occupy the entire Vaughn space there. Save a Lot only wants 18,000 square feet. The space is 43, so we're trying to get a, a co-tenant situation structured so that that space can get filled. Um, RLT's corporate offices are doing very well. That's the McDonald's regional offices. Uh, the FBI building is open and operational now. It's a phenomenal structure. Uh, we are continuing to work with the Urban Chamber of Commerce so that they can realize their federal grant funding to build their facility in Enterprise Park. The Expertise School of Beauty just had their grand opening. They're doing very well. This is one of those examples where the the sketch that they brought in and the reality are exactly the same project that they promised. And the Foundation for an Independent Tomorrow is moving forward. They've received a major commitment of funding and are now moving into the design development process. Stuart Mojave, that site, um, they encountered some due diligence they required environmentally. They've overcome that now. They are now in a position where they're going to move forward with the actual uh, takedown of the site and moving forward. Uh, this is the Urban Loss Group with their 50-unit plan to build more of the uh, townhouse units at that site. And then uh, moving into casinos, I'll just do some quick ones. This is the plans for the new Port Cachera at the El Cortez. Lady Luck, we continue to work with on the plans for their existing property. They've indicated they have uh, are bringing in a new investment partner and will be getting this project back on track. Golden Nugget, this is a shot of their interior pool area that they've just recently announced and they've opened and it's an exciting new addition to their project. And then moving on to other ones, we continue to work forward with the Fifth Street School. And this is an interior shot of what our plans would look like for the renovation of the actual uh, gym space as an auditorium for a uh, public assembly facility. And of course the Bulldog site, we're continuing to work with CityMark on that project. Um, actually, they have been very aggressive, and I would give this group credit in, in marketing their ground floor of their proposed project to grocers. Um, we've continued to get updates on the, the progress they're achieving and, and contacting major grocers regionally and from around the country. We believe they, this project may require, though, an extension of their ENA in order to continue to carry us through that process. We'll be bringing that forward as well. And then this is the uh, parking garage at 4th and Lewis, which will be a badly needed shot in the arm for parking in the vicinity of the Regional Justice Center. And we continue to monitor the progress of Castaway and Stations Casino's use of that site. So that's the end of my report. If you have any questions, I'd be glad to answer those. Any questions? I have a question. Uh, where are we at with uh, the PPA in their building? Uh, have they decided what they're going to do yet? Or? Uh, we're we're uh, been... Uh, uh, actually trying to make contact with them. Um, they, uh, I think as I previously reported, were experiencing um, difficulties in making a project pencil at the Clark in Las Vegas site. In, they were with uh, City Mart uh, at that site? I believe that's what they've been trying to do, is try to work out a deal with them. Um, you know, at the end of the day, they, they've been very insistent on being able to kind of control their project and not being a partner with somebody else and that may or may not work out in terms of a partnership with them. We're trying to find them other sites um, that would meet the requirement of a trade for the site that's at on Stewart because we really are tr we're making a good faith effort to work with them so that we can get them out of that site so that site can be made available for any potential arena or other redevelopment on that site. Thank you. Any other questions or comments? I'll make a motion to accept uh, Scott's report. I have a motion to please cast your vote. May I have a word on it? Uh, sure. Thank you. Uh, this is all good. It's fine. Uh, concerning a lot of your giant projects, are they moving along superiorly smooth? Now, I know this is Ward 1, 3, and 5, so therefore you are based, these wards are responsible for the downtown corridor and some of the inner city. So some of these 
projects are going to have their little bumps in the road. You know, some are going to get by, some are going to pass. You're going to have to look mind the set back in phases. But I noticed that this particular man, he's out there working hard, you know, getting a lot of these things done. So all I'm trying to say, I'm getting you the pat on the back. I don't want to stay for this uh, 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 public comment part thing, but Mr. Reese, I was over at the county yesterday, and there's something you really need to know. You and uh, Mr. Brown. Mr. Brown, uh, you, I know you've got two more years, and you'll be going on out. And, and Reese, you're going to get reelected, so you get four more good years. And you and uh, Mr. Woodbury is going to be the last, what they call, I call the old guard, from both, from both the city and the county. Now, Woodbury, uh, you know, hey, I call him the... The big kid, and then I called the young man that just left y'all with Mr. Reese yesterday. I mean, Mr. Wheatley, the uh, the new kid on the block. The idea is what I'm trying to say. This is just something to let y'all know. I love you, and Mr. Mr. Brown, I really got it for you. You see, you are the last of the people that was appointed and then elected. See, you came upstairs too. Hold on now. I know you finna leave. You got you gonna be leaving it two years or whatever. But the objective is you're also from Boston, where they got Milk Street, and and they got my favorite university that I attend for one day, and that's MIT, you know, Massachusetts Institute of Technology, whatever, over there in Cambridge. Whatever. I just want to let you. Know, I, I've been around the block. But the objective is is uh uh, uh, uh uh what you got going here. You're working hard on it, and I love you for doing what you're doing. You this is a, this city is a, just on my top. It's just flowing like it's going out of style. Thank you. Thank you. Mr. McGowan? If I can remember all that. Tom McGowan, Las Vegas resident. Uh, on the basis of uh, important information that you might want to consider. Historically, the uh, Union Pacific Railroad property, then owned, was uh, badly polluted over the years, decades, as a matter of fact, from uh, everything from diesel, fuel spillages, uh, to even uh, toxic waste that would park literally yeah. right there for uh, a long length of time. And then EPA uh, insisted that it be now, is, it, is, this, is this on the report? That yeah, you're uh, we're talking about your, your item, your report. Okay. Okay. As opposed to elections. If you don't mind, I'll talk about the item. And uh, the question is how deep was that uh, uh, cleanup? Uh, ordered by EPA. How deep did it go on the ground? 7 feet, 25 feet, or 40 feet? And the closest understanding is 7 feet. However, if you put all these buildings up there, no and everything else, uh, you're going to want to be on top of the potential issue of sick buildings. Now, in all of your planning, I don't recall any of you ever mentioning anything about that possibility. But I recommend that you do include it in your future studies, if you do continue. On a, another uh, final point, I'm going to do with Fremont East. You're talking essentially there about limited incremental projects, each one standalone individually, although they're in the general uh, proximity of the area. Uh, redevelopment works best and only works best as a holistic process, ongoing and continuum. It's not about individual projects. It's about the entirety of the context moving forward from Lee and Paisley. I hope you follow what I'm saying. Because if you don't, you will be faced with eventually the success of one or another and the failure of certain others because they're not coherent. Thank you. Thank you. Al Gallego, a citizen of Las Vegas. Uh, Mr. Adamson did not discuss all the projects in the redevelopment area. There's an apartment house on uh, Bonanza Road and Main Street. What's happening there? Uh, I think that he should mention there because uh, they're going to have a big groundbreaking Friday. I think he probably doesn't know about it because they don't know what's happening. He sure does. One of the things that, too, that really, really bothers me in the downtown area is we're going to have thousands and thousands of people living in the downtown area. Where are they going to do their shopping? They're going to have to get in their cars and drive, drive somewhere. There's no grocery stores. The same thing is happening in the West Las Vegas in the downtown area. I think they're probably going to be shopping at uh, that 99 cent store on Charleston in Maryland. Or, uh, Mr. Mr. Gallegos, uh in Mr. Adams' uh, report, we are negotiating on the Bulldog site just south of the uh, federal building 
for a, a, an anchor tenant on the bottom, which would be a grocery store. Well, that's he always discussed things, but he. I want to see the I building. Could, I, I want to see the grocery store. I want to be able to push my go cart, my cart down the aisles of the grocery store. Not talk about it. So do we. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, on the motion, please cast your vote. Please post. Motion carries. It is now time for citizens' participation. Public comment during this portion of the agenda must be limited to matters within the jurisdiction of the redevelopment agency. No subject may be acted upon by the redevelopment agency unless that subject is on the agenda and is scheduled for action. If you wish to be heard, come to the podium and give your name for the record. The amount of dis discussion on any single subject, as well as the amount of the time any single person is allowed, may be limited. Uh, can we please have three minutes, please? Yes, sir. Uh, good afternoon, uh, City Council. My name is Vincent James Walter Watley IV. Uh, I'm here to make a presentation. I sent a letter to the President of the United States of America. <clears throat> the, uh, I'll just read what I have here and then I'll comment afterward. Uh, <clears throat> in this note, I wrote... Uh, we're, we're, we're discussing here items in the redevelopment areas. Right? Yeah, see, it's about the, uh, the uh, application for the items of agenda. And uh, I'm named entitled as the executive resident at the White House, but it appears that I'm not even, uh, I'm not being allowed to use my tax voucher that's providing your income or your salary. And <clears throat> this matter needs to be addressed because <clears throat> you guys are ignoring the legislative process. And if you're up here in, a, in an authoritative position, then it's your duty. As a civil sir, sir, servant, at this, at this time, all we're discussing is items pertaining to the redevelopment area, and what you're talking about has nothing to do with the redevelopment area or items within the redevelopment area. Okay, it's uh, citizen participation, right? Under the redevelopment, yes. Okay, well then, it yes. calls for a, a proliferation process. If you're going to proliferate anything, you need the executive chef's order to proceed as counsel. Now, I, I wrote a letter to the President of the United States, and I know, good afternoon, Mr. President of the United States of America. Mr. President, uh, there's only three material witnesses that are required by state law to have a receipt proving the prepositional phrase inclusive of, that is iron, steel, and metal. Uh, my name entitlement to the executive resident is what makes positive acceptance of these findings valid. I respectfully request as a key point in legislative process to confirm my own identification and residency that the buying power demonstrated in the magneto optical by securing uh, be to secure to state the receipt and parcel when determining the right to occupy geometrically. Now this is just basic law. These are tools that are necessary to complete a job to prove to be proactive. Now, I have tried to use my own credentials just to have somewhere to stay. I don't have to stay with people because it appears that the, the applicants that are, that are applying for the items of agenda that are listed on the items of agenda are, are being hush-hush by embezzlement or verb transitive. They're not proven to be relative to the solution. Now, I respectfully request, I've been down here numerous of times, and I've asked you guys repeatedly to assist me. Thank you, sir. There's no sir on uh, three signs. On the, uh, <clears throat> on the rectangle, no sir. On the uh, pennant, no sir. And on the uh, trapezoid. Thank you. Thank you. Dorothy Barnes, Las Vegas resident. I don't know if it'll fall under the redevelopment agency. I would like to see more qualified law enforcement officials, more well trained. Even if they have to retrain the police officers and marshals, they have in Washington D.C. They did it. They did it ten officers at a time. They retrain them because the criminals are getting up on. And as this city grow in population, with all the high rises, more and more people relocating here year after year, we need more qualified law enforcement people because the criminals are about to run me out 
And I don't know if any other residents begin to feel insecure as more and more people relocate here. The criminals are taking over. They got a, a slick, city slick thing going, undercover thing going, and they're getting the ups on the officers that are here. And I support law enforcement. Every penny I have, I want it to go into qualified law enforcement. And I support them. And I don't want people to say that all the policemen are bad, all the law enforcement people are bad, because in the past there have been some things that went on in every city where people were shot by law enforcement for doing something crazy maybe. But I support law enforcement. I want to see them. I want to even give them the opportunity to endorse me and sign themselves in on my ticket on a promissory note. And people may not understand that, but if you talk to the most worshipful grandmaster of the Masonics, Prince Hall, Scottish Rite, the Elks, Rotarians, Knights of Columbus, they get people signed in on a promissory note. That gives officers more security as they do their job and their families to protect our city and all of our people as this city grow. Thank you. Thank you. Next, please. Good morning. My name is Ted Russell, a resident of Las Vegas. I think it is great good news that we have 500 new rooftops downtown. Bring the affluent people and the businesses will follow. I have no doubt that we will secure a good supermarket downtown. But in the meantime, supermarket shopping is my idea of nothing to do. If I lived in Streamline, I would go online and get my groceries delivered. Thank you so much. Thank you. <coughs> Tom McGowan, Las Vegas resident. Uh, redevelopment's interesting topic because uh, it's not about rooftops or structures or nightclubs or everything else. It's about people. People circulate. People communicate. And what are the people going to be here? Who are they? What do they look like? Anybody know? You don't know. You say this one is 50% sold. This would have percent on the uh, gun. But who are those people? Are they from Arabia? People from Little China? Are they from Bayonne, New Jersey? From your hometown or yours? Who are they? What do they look like? What are they going to be like? And how many of those properties and projects are going to work with those people? Just heard a man talk about going online. You can go online anytime. You have to buy groceries at the grocery store. Or anything else. You have to buy a Lamborghini out of the display window at some loss if that's what they choose to put in there. Now, what does that do for the reinvigoration and the revitalization and the pedestrian friendly city of downtown Las Vegas? That all is on the if come. You have no idea. And it's time for you to admit it. You don't know what this revised city will look like. But you need to find out because you're responsible for it. And when it comes time to govern it, if you're still here, you'll be responsible, accountable, and liable. And I'll make sure of it. As mayor, I will decentralize government. Over-centralized government is a.k.a. dictatorship in the worst case scenario. That's where it goes. You need more time and presence on this council. All of you, each one of you, and every member of the bureaucracy who's worth their salt needs to be participant actively, not as some subculture, but as an active ingredient in the total government. That's called total quality. I would insist on it. So get ready. Thank you. Thank you. Anyone else wishing to speak? See no one. Uh, the redevelopment agency is adjourned. Uh, we'll see you back.